Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about the modern gaming experience. Now I've broken this idea into two different parts, two different videos, and this first one is going to be fairly personal with a lot of subjective experiences and what I have done to perhaps cheapen the gaming experience. Part two, released at a later date, is going to be covering what developers are doing. Maybe they're catering to the modern gamer, whatever that is. You'll get to hear what that is in the next video. On this one, and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this in the first place is because I feel like I have taken a bite of the forbidden fruit in gaming. Yes, save states when playing games. Am I actually playing these games and beating them legitimately? Or am I cheapening the experience for myself? Am I playing the games not as intended and not fully realizing the developer's dreams? I've got a whole bunch of questions like that and related to those. I'm gonna to try to explore them here with you. And so please, at any point, jump into the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know about your own experiences as well. And we can try to figure out what in fact the intended and ideal game experience is. And have modern gamers gotten a little bit too lazy? Or is it just something that we're forced to do with our limited free time? So let's begin with the tiniest amount of history here and something that actually made me think about the save states to begin with, quick saving and quick loading. And the first instance, at least that I saw online, of quick saves and quick loads was in Wolfenstein 3D, released in 1992. Now, games have come a long way since then, but quick saves and quick loads are something that are still imperative to being able to play a game, especially on PC, fairly well. Not sure how they work on console, I've never used them there. But we have auto saves, and we have other things that are coming to our rescue in difficult scenarios in games. Right? If a combat situation is a little too difficult, you don't want to be blowing through all of your resources, you throw a quick save in there. You try it, you don't like the result, you reload it and you try it again with some tweaks in your strategy. Is that fair? Is that playing the way that's intended? Are you cheapening the experience? Maybe. It depends. I'll get back to that a little bit later when I talk about Baldur's Gate 3 because that's the most recent example of a game where people have been disputing that particular topic. What else came afterwards? I feel like it's worth noting that one legitimate form of rewinding in video games is Prince of Persia. Now, was that game designed with better puzzles in mind, better platforming in mind, because the rewind feature was actually built in and it's a feature, it's your main character's ability? Play Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, the first one in the trilogy. I'm sure you'll like it, and then you can play the rest of the trilogy. Really great game, and yeah, it really is a lot of fun when you're taking on these obstacles and you use your rewind. And it's not as simple as, oh, I slipped and I messed up, let me rewind it and try it again. There are actually different puzzle structures in the game that can be manipulated by your time manipulation. And so that's worth exploring. Just felt like I'd dive back into a couple of older games and bring them up before settling on our current tools. Now we have the emulators. Now we have Nintendo Switch Online, which actually lets you rewind your games there as well. Now we have the save states and loading the save states. You can save 20 saves in a game and you can go back and you replay it from any point that you created one of those states in. But more specifically, we're going to focus on when we are creating a save state for a difficult situation. We are just trivializing difficult platforming in video games. Think about something like Mega Man, right? And this is an example that's also personal to me because this is how I played Mega Man's one through six. I couldn't necessarily be bothered to spend so much time memorizing the pattern layouts, practicing and executing the controls properly. The jumping's a little bit janky here and there. Some enemies are more bullet sponges than others. I can't be bothered to figure out which one takes four hits, which one takes six hits, and then to have to go back to the beginning of the level and try it all over again, no. So just for the sake of being able to say, I played the games, I experienced the games, I played through them with save states. Here's a new screen, here's the boss coming up, plop in a save. Don't do too well, don't wanna use my lives up, don't wanna use up my ammo for any particular gun, let me load it up again. So, why do we do it? Why do we resort to cheapening these experiences with external tools? I said earlier that I couldn't be bothered, but what does that mean? Allow me to elaborate, and this is personal, so this is where in the comments section I would like to read a lot of your reasons why you have dipped into save states and other things of that nature for the games that you've gone back and played, or even modern games. Maybe you have ways of cheating modern games, and I'll describe one a little bit later as well. I am not a very clean gamer, I'm not very pure. So, 
Time is just too valuable to me. I don't have enough free time, and yet I have so many games that I wanna play. Free time versus the backlog, something's gotta give. And when it comes to older games that maybe aren't as sophisticated, games that just I don't find as fun, and I just wanna expedite the adventure and get to the end as quickly as possible, whatever the reason has is for the game design, I'm gonna to get to that in more detail in just a moment. I gotta speed up the process when I'm not having a good time. And then there's games like Tears of the Kingdom where I'm doing the most trivial things. I'm just collecting hundreds of Korok seeds and yet I'm having so much fun doing that and I wouldn't wanna spend my time any differently. Difficulty is another reason. Not just difficulty on its own for me, I've talked before about how I need challenge and reward. I need them to be intertwined and I need the rewarding aspects of the game to be worthwhile. If you are asking me to play a section over 20 times, just because that's how many times it takes to practice it and to get good at it. If you're telling me to do it 20 times over, what are you gonna reward me with? Just a boss fight? And beating the boss only advances me to the next part of the game? If the next part of the game plays the same way as the previous part of the game, that's not enough of a reward for me. And I realize I might sound a little bit spoiled in describing my games like this. Like what? You can't just play a game because that's the way the developers made it and you should just enjoy it because it's a hard game and it's challenging and you get to shoot things and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm sorry. But if I'm not hooked on the game because of its mechanics and because of the gameplay, then simply beating it is not enough. And again, it's a little contradictory because I've mentioned how I need to beat games. I can't retire them, but I'm a complicated individual. We'll leave it at that. There's something else I want to mention with why people resort to these things. And this, I believe, came up around the time of The Last of Us 2. And certainly it came up again with Elden Ring. And you were hearing from different publications that Elden Ring needs more accessibility features. Elden Ring needs an easy mode. I'm sorry, but who said that Elden Ring has to have an accessibility mode? There are plenty of tools in the game with different weapons and different builds, different ways that you can accessorize yourself to make the experience a little bit easier. The challenge in Elden Ring is discovering your way to beat the game. And so this leads into the next point that I want to discuss, which is the intended game design. And what were the designers' visions when they were creating these games? Are we just throwing that out the window so that we can prioritize our own interests when we're playing? And it, is it costing us? Is it not? Well, that's a bit of a separate question. But let's focus on the intended design and the vision that the developers had. Some games are designed so that you cannot beat them quickly. Some games are designed so that you cannot beat them easily. Maybe you need to collect so much of a certain resource. Maybe there has to be a grind. You can't just do one of the story chapters and then advance to the next one without any grinding in between. Think of some of those arduous JRPGs. Designers have different ideas when they create the games. Those are the games that they publish. Those are the games that they release. And those are the things that they want you to do when you play them. When journalists and other advocates for easier games start getting up in arms about every single game, I just have to shut that down. You know what? Use the third party tools that I talked about. Use a lot of creative exploits. I gotta mention Dark Souls here because even though it seems like a game where, oh, every time you take on a boss or, and, you, and you lose, you die, you have to backtrack from the bonfire to the boss again. And you're going through enemies, you're going through this gauntlet of difficult challenges and obstacles and platforming and whatever it may be, just to get that boss fight again. And then you gotta scramble to pick up your souls again. And then you lose to the boss one more time. And you gotta do it all over again. Well look, if you're really creative, you don't need the developer to do anything for you. You could do something like make a copy of your save right outside the boss door, and then when you lose, just reload that save, copy it back into your games folder. Maybe you can't do that on consoles like PS4 and Xbox, but you can do it on PC. Anyways, that long-winded Dark Souls explanation is just my way of telling you that game designers and developers don't necessarily have to change their vision to accommodate you. And guess what? There are so many thousands, tens of thousands, I don't know, maybe there's hundreds of thousands of games in existence. If you want an easier game, go find one of those. Not everything has to conform to everybody. And that's just a little bit of modern thinking that I can't stand. I might complain about certain games, and I might compare certain modern games to older games or vice versa. I might do apples to oranges comparisons every now and then. I'm guilty of that. But I'm not gonna take it as far as complaining that 
this game needs to be remade for me. This game needs to be remade so that I can play it and I can beat it. Sorry, buddy, but you suck at games. End of story. Go play something else. No, I'm being a little facetious there, but I just hope you understand my point here, which is that not everything has to accommodate everybody. So going back to that question of what is ideal when you're playing a game, is it playing the game in a way that suits your tastes and your needs and puts the player first, or is it going back to what the developer intended for you? How much changes when you decide to circumvent things and to change things and to use these external tools, right? You are completely changing the Mega Man experience and the Dark Souls experience, but are you really? Maybe you're just cutting out a lot of fluff. Maybe you're just cutting out a lot of bulk. But at the end of the day, when you beat that final boss, you play the same game as everybody else. You're just worse at it. Or maybe that's not true whatsoever. I can let you guys in the comments section come up with examples and argue that point. It's not one that I need to linger on for too long. What about these modern save systems? Do they need to be innovated? Or are they fine staying intact and staying in these games? Are they ruining some gaming experiences? Or should the onus fall to the player? Baldur's Gate 3, right? I'm gonna create a save. I'm gonna do this skill check. Oh, I don't meet the skill check and I don't want the suboptimal way of playing the game or of experiencing the story. I'm gonna reload my save. Again, I'm gonna get to that in a little moment. And then finally, what I wanna wrap up this little subsection with is remakes and remasters. And have you noticed that, especially in the case of JRPGs? A lot of remakes and remasters are releasing with these external tools applied. You have them in the menus. You can play the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. And if you want, I don't want any overworld uh, en encounters. If you want, I want four times experience. I want four times guild gain. Because when I play these old, archaic, and dated games, I don't necessarily care about the grind. Uh, you know, I'm not being stimulated enough because there's not enough on screen for me. Or whatever the reason is, I'm being facetious again. They could be legitimate causes, they could be spoiled causes, or reasons. But everyone's got their reasons for wanting to use these tools. One question I will leave you with is, are we getting away from necessary challenge in games? I still think that there's enough games being made where if you want your truly challenging games, there will be developers still creating those. And maybe it just so happens that the AAA games and the household names that we're accustomed to, that they might dumb their games down too much. You know what happens? You stop buying them, you stop supporting them. It's not the end of the world. If Mario or Zelda ever became too different, ever strayed too far from the formula, I would just stop playing those games. So with that in mind, I know where I draw the line. What about you? Where do you draw the line on things like using a guide? Some players use guides from the start of their adventure to the very end of their adventure. Personally, I could not do that. I like to use a guide when I get stuck on a situation, right? That's pretty fair. Uh, I'll give myself, you know, 10, 15 minutes, however fun the challenge is to try to overcome it myself. I try not to be one of those people who reads ahead in the guide and finds out, oh, am I gonna lose this party member if I don't do this right now? I don't know. I, again, I don't think that games need to change too much. I don't think it's a bad thing that games have consequences like uh, party members that you can't acquire again, items that you'll never have a chance of getting one more time. But I know that over time, it's kind of grown to bother me, right? Another thing, where do you draw the line on min-maxing? And again, this comes back to using guides as just a, a resource that you cannot do without, a mandatory resource. I need to know how to get the most stat point investment or whatever it is, because heaven forbid I should try to beat the game with a suboptimal character. What about this one? What about people watching others play their games? So <laughs> this is, I think it's related to the topic at hand. People have gotten so far away from wanting to experience challenge or to having issues with their own free time that they will just sit at a stream and watch somebody else play a game that they themselves wanted to play. Personally, I could never do it. I gave up a lot of stream watching a long time ago. If that's you, I would like to hear your reasons for it, right? Was I hitting the nail on the head when it's something of a time issue? Do you just like the way other people play other genres of games and you want to experience that? I'm not sure. One thing that I do know is that a horror game, when you play it in front of a large audience, is no longer scary, right? A lot of these people with their put on and exaggerated reactions to certain jump scares or whatever, those aren't legitimate, those aren't genuine. They're putting it on, like I just said. So 
Horror games definitely take a hit. That's not one that I would want to do in front of an audience because I know that I would curb the way that I play the game to kind of suit my audience, to try to entertain them and appease them. All right, and let's wrap up here. I'm just going to bring up a few more points to put it all together again. Some of the last things that I want to leave you with. Personally, one of my main takeaways here as I kind of reflect on these topics is that time is money. My time is worth too much, and when I add certain tasks, like I need to beat Zelda 2 so that I could put it in my Zelda ranking video for the channel. If the game's not cutting it for me, if the game's not fun, I got better things to do. Save states, cheats, whatever. I didn't legitimately beat the game, and I'm aware of that, and I'll just mention that as a caveat when I bring the game up later on. Yes, guys, I beat Zelda 2, but I didn't do it the same way that many of you did. What about the games of old versus the games of today? These are not created equally. And one main example of that is I feel like the games of old suffered from a little bit of artificial difficulty and the games of today suffer from bloating. So, you know, when you use some of these external tools, you are in some senses trying to make the games of yesterday a little bit easier, a little bit more fun to play. And when you use those tools on the games that are released in the last decade, you're trying to eliminate some of that fluff. You're trying to eliminate some of the backtracking that just eats into your time and adds hours unnecessarily. Those are good reasons, maybe, for using these third-party tools. Those aren't necessarily cheapening the experience, but from everything that I listed, from everything that I talked about, I'm sure you can find certain ways that we do cheapen our gaming experiences. And so I would love to hear your opinions on all of those different things. Let me know, what has your modern gaming experience been like? Has it changed from when you were playing games as a kid until now? Do you ever use emulators? Do you use save states and cheats and things of that nature? Are there some games that you just cannot bear putting the full amount of playtime into? Are you someone like me who can't retire a game, you have to beat a game? There's so much that I wanna hear from the audience. I'm looking forward to it all. And all of you can also look forward to part two when I talk about more of the developers' ambitions and their goals and the people who are playing these games. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.